join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. In an earlier episode of The Ultimate Shot, you witnessed the first mountain in Yala that was taken with the use of bow and arrow. This trophy was not just the next in Yala. Party starts. It was one of the four biggest trophies ever taken of this mysterious animal. The very fact that despite the great difficulties that the local population had with their subsistence, this animal lived to a ripe old age. This meant that people were able to judge and appreciate what treasures nature entrusted to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. After the sweet intoxication of the great success with the Inyala, we continue our hunting adventure in the search of the next ultimate shot. The next challenge that awaited us in the highlands of Ethiopia was the Menilix bushbuck. The shot through the intertwined branches and bushes was not easy to make, but we made a hit. Oh, yes. He's still something moving there. Okay. Oh, God. Nice pushback. Great old, spot. Old, old Great push spot. Finally got in range and got a great bushbuck. Um, you probably see on this tape, there's just an unbelievable resource here. There's bushbuck everywhere. You can't walk a couple hundred yards without seeing bushbuck. I've never seen a concentration of animals in the forest anywhere like this, anywhere that I've been in the world. Dandy, it's our second leg of our trip. Uh, we were very successful here, got the mountain in Yala we were after, which is the very first ever taken with bow and arrow, and we got a tremendous trophy, 37 inches almost. We got a Menelix uh, bushbuck, a uh, real beauty, and so uh, we got the two main trophies we were after, and now we're headed to uh, Dandy. Uh, it's a flat floodplain. There'll be hardly any cover. We have our blind that we've uh, got that's uh, 3D and we're going to spruce that up so with some grass. Morning, I think we're going to come down here and try to, try to get a hippo. But the plan is we're going to park the car over there where we are now. We can't get any closer. Then we'll sneak through this papyrus, get as close to the water here as possible and try to get the Try to get the hippos, you know, while they're coming into the water. If we can see them, hopefully from far away, we can try to get catch them further out on land because we don't want to you know, arrow it too close to the water. But that's our game plan for tomorrow. As you can see, there's plenty of hippos here, but we just try to catch them out of the water in the morning. Are there crocs in this water too? No, no just no. very little ones. Yeah. Well, we uh, came down this morning, our first morning here, and ran into two huge bull buffalo. So that really put a kibosh into our hippo hunt right off the bat. One bull was really big. He cut in front of us to the heavy timber and the high grass. So the boy said, well, it was just impossible to follow him. The other one headed out in our direction where we were going for the hippos. And uh, anyway, uh, the wind was really bad here this morning. And uh, there were several hippos out of the water. And we got down to the lagoon here, but uh, they uh, winded us and uh, got into a channel, a deep channel, and then swam to the main, sh main pond. So um, we were really close on both the buffalo and both the hippo, but just didn't come together. So next time. Starting to move, starting to get out of the water. In fact, they're coming around the 
house in a channel. They got to start feeding and they got to go further to feed because they've eaten so much of the grass close to the river there that they have to go further. So we're just hoping that before it gets too dark, one big male will come out and give us a chance. could not see an animal big or old enough, so I gave up the idea of shooting at a hippopotamus. We continue our safari, trying enthusiastically to come close enough to the gazelle herds. Soon we discover that the Grant gazelle are not the calmest animals. They watch us curiously from afar, but if we shorten the distance, they leave the battlefield with grace. Cory bustards, uh, they used to, there used to be a lot of them in Arabia, but the, the Arabs used to fly their falcons. It's the Cory Buster, it was called the Sport of Kings. You read a lot about how, you know, a lot of Wilbur Smith books and stuff like that, they, they talk about how, you know. Falcons would kill a Cory Buster? Oh yeah, the big falcons and eagles would kill the Cory Busters, and they pretty much eliminated them all from the Arabian Peninsula now. So they come out here to Africa looking for the busters because they want to fly their birds against the buster. The Tiang herds were even shyer and did not allow us even to approach them at 200 yards. There was no chance for me to reach them, not with a bow. All our attempts to reach the gazelle in the open savanna were unsuccessful. We needed serious cover if we wanted to get closer to them. The one on the left. Wait though. The one on the left. No. The idea to use termite mounds as a cover provided us with a wonderful spot in the VIP lounge for this martial show of the gazelles. Come a little closer. Are you okay? Yeah. The one on the... Wait. I don't know what happened there. So which guineas are those? This is the helmeted guinea fowl. Our every attempt to get closer to the animals diminished my optimism that I would be able to obtain such a beautiful trophy. The elegant gazelle, which was named after the English explorer James Grant, was an extremely cautious animal. The common methods of waylaying at some water source nearby would not bring any result because these gazelle get their water they need from the green grass and leaves they feed on. The only thing left for us was to try to get to at least my maximum shooting distance with persistence and lots of hard work. Outside there, with his head down. Yeah, how far is he? 90 yards, dead on. Wait, there's a female crossing. Wait, female's too close to Oh. The females are running. Wait, okay, there's a second one. No, they can't. They're just moving. It's all right. Let's keep going. All right, it's typical uh, early morning. We just drove through some uh, fresh grass, which we haven't driven through, so a little bit of seeds, but. Uh, we got to our lesser kudu area and we're going to start hunting lesser kudu this morning and we'll see what happens. Get cleaned up first because right now really can't even see anything but we're going to do some hunting. <laughs>
मानो से मो मानो से मो आओ दैट्स हाउ दे स्लीप विद द हेडरेस्ट या ऐसे एंड ना सिटी कम विद कैन यू लॉब इट ओवर देर या आई गेस सो yard so he was right about here standing let's just that's a tiang that's a tiang good to attack well we uh finally got some camp meat for the boys uh i got a great tiang it's one of the biggest they've taken in this area uh different genetics than in the sudan where they get the big ones which is about a thousand miles away but uh they got a great population here we figure there's two or three thousand gazelles here and about a thousand tiang they're very spooky you can't get near them you can't go to water holes and you can't set up blinds but uh anyway we uh had a lot of fun this morning got a great trophy and uh we're going to head back to camp here and uh feed ourselves and the boys on the following day we continued with our attempts to make one of the grant's gazelles a star of the ultimate shot And he didn't really go far, and he's bleeding quite a bit. And, and we see him lying down, but he is not down. And uh, we don't want to spook him. And uh, it's very thick cover in some of these little areas, and we don't want him to go in there. We don't want to lose him. You got him. Wow! Nice shot. Well done, Archie. Thanks. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Fine. Thank Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is the northern Grand Gazelle, which is only found in Kenya and Ethiopia. The equator splits the northern and the southern Grants, which is now which is Hannibal in Tanzania. So this is the first specimen ever taken with, as far as I know, ever taken at least in Ethiopia, with a bow and arrow. Very difficult to get close to because of the open plains. We made a great, good first shot because it was at 90 yards. We were able to track him, sneak up to him, and put a shot through some really thick brush right into his shoulder and found him dead about 100 yards later. It's a great trophy and uh, good job. Yeah, well, thanks. And you know, we, uh, you'll see on the video, you'll see lots of them. There's a couple thousand here. Oh, yeah, probably about 4,000. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> we got a safari here in Ethiopia. Lots yeah. of firsts. That's Lots right. of firsts. That's, That's the way right. we like it. Somebody's got to break the ground, and uh, we That's did. That's it. And, and uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, we're now going out. It's cleared. Uh, there's blue sky. The sun's out. And uh, we're going after a Gunter's Dick Dick. And uh, we have a tag for that, and we've seen several uh, the last couple of days. And we're going to try and find a big one. And uh, they're not a big animal, but they have relatively nice little horns, so we'll see what happens. He's digging, he's scratching, he's may marking his territory. And they got these little glands right under their eyes. And he'll rub it up against like grass. Watch now. See him? He's rubbing his gland up against that grass. Just mark. They always go around in pairs, male and a female. See him? He's still marking his territory. Gunter's Dick Dick, named after a German zoologist, differ from the rest of the species in the genus with its unusually long nose. Indeed, in some cases, it looks just like a trunk. There. Okay, wait, wait. I can't shoot in front of Yep. Yep. You did a pretty good, Archie. Calling back to you. All right, it's great. Twenty. Yeah. Underneath him. Hit the tree. Kwan lelanga dala banat and they're gonna him be aqua. That's the arrow, and finally, uh. We uh, were able to get a dick-dick in all this brush. We got a deflection, but it still was a good shot. And uh, 
he ran from one bush to another and now he's gone into a bush here and he's down. So um, that's our first trophy at Omo and the first Gunter's Dick Dick ever taken by a bow hunter. Um, Ethiopia has all these species that are indigenous here and uh, no one has ever tried to hunt them before. So. Oh, what a beautiful Dick Dick. 15 feet though. It's, oh, he's long. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, when you shot him from right in there, he just went through the bushes a little bit, died right there. Your arrow went straight through him. You see it over here? Oh, yeah. Went straight through him. This is where he was lying down. Oh, yeah. When you shot him, went straight through him. And he was just able to jump and run about seven feet. With those, those knocks when they're lit, they can really see them, can't they? Yeah. That's a nice, that helped a lot, especially in these dark conditions. I could see that went right through him. Good jump. Well. We got our good news, Dick Dick. Let me get him out here. But you see, they rub, they rub uh, against grass and little twigs, just to mark their territory. And uh, that's just a really, really, really nice Dick Dick. I mean, you can see his horns start from all the way down in here, so it's a good three plus yeah. inch Dick Dick. Well, they're a small target. And we saw lots of them. They're everywhere. Oh, plenty of yeah. dick. On the last day of our expedition, we will visit a small village where we will introduce you to the real and probably, in your opinion, hard life of the local population. But they did have alcohol, potions, and everything else that grows in this climate. Oh, uh. This is a game the magician with the camera became the children's favorite. Going into the village, see what's happening. Horn beer. Horn beer. Yeah, that they make. Now it's alcoholic. Everyone here is like, this is, they stir it with the sorghum. And this is slightly alcoholic. If you drink, if you drink enough of it, smell it, you can smell the fermentation in there. You sure can. See? Yeah. You want to try some? No. This is, these are actually beetle wings. You see these? These are just a huge collection of beetle wings, believe it or not. You know, the wings that the, the, the sheath over the beetle wings? Oh. They string them all together like this. Yeah. And they make these things. Decoration stuff. It's just the whole the ground, and they, they weave this, you know, out of out of wood, and then they they fill it up with dirt, like clay. And then the top comes off. They store their sword in the side there. Yeah, it's hard. It's it. There. There you go. So here's the. This is the honey bear, or the maize. The maize. Alcohol that they make. It's actually pretty good. This one is. So all the boys are in here drinking, are they? Yeah. You don't want to try a little bit? No. Just pretend. Just pretend. You have to. Just hold it and pretend, but don't drink it. But just pretend, okay? All right. It's not bad. Okay. Okay. My friend. My friend. Yes. So they did. Well, I've had all that alcohol. <laughs> Is she? Yeah, I just, they just took the blindfold off me. They didn't uh, let us see where we were going because this is Jason's hot spot for now. Jason, it's uh, three weeks. It's uh, last night here in uh, Ethiopia for us, and uh, we're just drifting on the lake, uh, relaxing, and uh, we've caught uh, a pile of Nile perch and uh, uh, lots of fish today. And uh, we've got our collection for dinner tonight. We've got uh, five animals, I guess, so far this trip, and uh, three of them were archery world records. Uh, first animals ever taken with bow, and uh, we focused this uh, trip totally on the mountain in Yala, 
and the fifth day of 21 days we got that and then so we've sort of been cruising since then and uh, saw three different wonderful areas and uh, met some great people and had some great hunts and great experiences and uh, changeable weather to go with it so uh, it's been a great trip. It has been a good trip. It was fun having you Archie and hope to do this again. Yeah, hope so. We, uh, We'll have to come back. There's another 25 or 30 species for us to photograph and uh, maybe hunt. And uh, lots to do here in Ethiopia. It's a great country. Whoa! That's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and these Nile perch, yeah. well, they, I guess they don't want to go with us. <laughs> so we'll come back and see them, that's for sure. <laughs> In our next episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will travel around the world to hunt animals that would be extinct long ago if the hunting community had not artificially introduced them to new homelands. We will show you hunting of Himalayan tar, mufalon, and alpine ibex. You will learn about their natural environments and the way and where they live. We will show you the tricks that local guides use in order to outwit these clever animals. You will also see how we set a world record with bow and arrow on the next Ultimate Shot.